when uh, when I was uh, driving, I did smell some uh, some um, Freon, and uh, there is a little tiny bit of steam being blown uh, blown out. So we got to find out where that's coming from. Took it down Rosby Hall uh, on the way back. Thermostat, uh, the temperature maxed out. Got a high whistle, high rev in the uh, RPMs. Uh, had to shut the engine off, turn it on, and then I uh, got a engine uh, uh, gauge indication, and just the RPMs were running way high. Oh man, what what the heck happened here? Uh, my thermostat over there is uh, is really maxed out. Well, I'm getting ready to change out the uh, thermostat. Uh, actually, I'm uh, changing everything out, including the, the radiators leaking really bad. So uh, I'm going to change out the hoses, the thermostat, the whole thing while I'm doing this. Everything's coming off of eBay. Uh, believe it or not, half the price uh, of the local store. The first thing store. we're going to do is uh, drain the coolant fluid. All right. So um, uh, one thing you want to be uh, be uh, aware of is uh, if you're just doing the thermostat, if you're getting a, a temperature to where uh, it's um, overheating, and uh, it's because the fluid's not going through the thermostat. Uh, you just have to drain your coolant enough to get to that, just the top part of the coolant, not all of it. And then, uh, you know, some people don't even put the coolant right back in as long as you put it in a clean container. Uh, so, uh, so if you're just doing a thermostat, just do that. I'm draining the whole thing because I'm doing the radiator, lower hose, upper hose, and thermostat. So uh, first thing to do is drain it. see all the drops underneath the radiator. Right, right in here. So uh, right here's your valve. My engine ex is extremely cold. Uh, I just had to put it up on uh, on the uh, um, ramps. So what you're going to do is counterclockwise, I think. <laughs> um, and I make sure buckets underneath. I do care about the environment. I'm on a gravel driveway, real close to the water. So uh, we're going to. I don't want to get the camera wet neither. <laughs> so uh, and it's running down my arm now too. That's okay. Got a headlight on, headlamp on. I was really hoping that would come out uh, another spout, but I've done this before. Um, I have about 258,000 miles on the Jeep. I love it. Okay, here it goes. Get as much as you can. Whoa! I know I got it on the camera too. That came rushing out, so just be ready for it. <laughs> that, that came rushing out. That's brand new coolant I just put in because I thought it was just overheating. That's brand new and I can't uh, go put it back in. But, uh, oh well. <laughs> oh man. All right, I'm going to leave the cap off of the drain. Leave that there while I'm, uh, while I'm uh, doing, uh, doing the hoses and stuff. I was telling you about uh, the hose clamps. You know what? I have never had a problem using uh, channel locks. So it's up to you what you want to do here. I don't think it deserves a warning though, it's not going okay, to kill you. After you have uh, drained the uh, fluid, uh, at least in, uh, low enough to actually work on this. So uh, you have two clamps to take off. You have your heater core and your top. Always oh, good to do it with hand, one hand. I hope I don't slip off. Okay, take your channel locks. Um, I have about three, four notches down. Uh, squeeze it together, wiggle it back and forth and up. And it's clear. This is a smaller one. You take it and squeeze it. And once again, wiggle back and forth to get over it. You have to really squeeze this thing. So bring that up, and they're both free and clear. So now you should be able to just wiggle these guys right off. And I'm glad I'm changing these. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, so see how some, uh, some of that corrosion, uh, some of that dust got on that wheel down there? You want to make sure your wheels are clear, nice and clean. Okay, you don't want anything in between that and the, the belt. So when we're done here, and I might take a wire brush and uh, clean that off too. Alright, so uh, move that out of the way. Uh, we're going to do the same with this other one, the heater core. Alright, that's not going to come out with one hand. So uh, you, you need to back okay, that off light on this for you. That's the switch you have to take off. There's a little uh, pressure thing right at the thumb. My camera's sliding. It's hard to do. Hold the light and the camera at the same time. Alright, but... Um, Take that and slide it back, push it in, slide out, and that's uh, that's how you take it off. And uh, just go ahead and set it okay, aside. The size socket I'm using is a number 13, number 13 millimeter. All right, for the for the bottom uh, bolt, um, 
This setup was not working for me, okay, because uh, it was putting this all the way up against the radiator and I couldn't get it on. So I have to go with a smaller one. You are working around the fan. It is kind of difficult to get into. All right, what you're fighting is the uh, fan belt and the fan, all right, but you are turning it. It, it does break free and you're turning it about an uh, eighth of a turn every time. So just keep working at it. Uh, we, do have to, we do have to put it back in a different way, and this, uh, the slow turn is going to actually help out putting it back in. So uh, just keep going at it and get that screw out. The bottom one uh, should come out first, because once you take the top one out, it's going to pivot once it comes loose, and it's going to be hard to get to. Now the top one, you shouldn't need the extension, so uh, it's just right there. And just uh, break it free and, uh, well, and work it off. Something that should be hard to forget is the longer one goes on top and the shorter one goes on the bottom. Okay, so everything's out. I'm actually trying not to fall off my ladder here. Um, go ahead and wiggle it back and forth. And it pops right off. Uh, this guy's come right out. Uh, I want to see what this looks like. Not too bad. I see uh, some, uh, some debris or something on, on the switch itself. So that survived uh, 258,000 miles. And it looks like that. Pretty sweet. That tells me I have a pretty good cooling system. I right, try not to get anything inside that hole down there. Okay, that's the paper towel inside uh, the engine block. I put a paper towel around. Uh, it's all dry here, except for probably on the bottom of the engine block. I need to get some of this off. So I'm lightly brushing. Okay, uh, I don't want to score with the metal wire, the block itself. But what I want to do is get rid of the, the trash and everything. I might use a small chisel to just get rid of the trash that's around here before I put the new gasket on. The, the important part is you need to get this all cleaned all cleaned up around here. See this guy right here? My, my fingers getting caught up on that. That needs to be taken off. I've been using a chisel. You can see the stuff coming off right there. I'm not using a hammer on the chisel. I'm just scraping to get this stuff off. But you can see the stuff coming off there. All this will cause leaks. Okay, uh, we're going to go over it really lightly with very fine sandpaper. I just want to make sure it's all down to bare metal. This is graded 454. Um, I think it's uh, 220 uh, on another code. Um, wrap, kind of wrap it around your finger. Okay, get down there and do light sanding to get the rest of that stuff off. Okay, time to take this out. See all that stuff on the paper? Try keeping it inside the paper and pull that out. Just throw it on the ground. All right, you want to keep that belt nice and clean. You don't want any fragments getting on that belt. All right, so uh, we got to get down low, kind of below the belt line. Okay, that looks pretty darn good. I'm going to pull the paper out. Try not to break the paper. All right, that looks really clean. Use a chisel to get off as much as you can. Okay, all you're doing is uh, putting a little pressure down, getting up all off the cake stuff. I already did that. Got the uh, sealant um, and the uh, and the, uh, the gasket off. Uh, get inside with your nail and the cracks. Make sure nothing's in there. Use a piece of very fine sandpaper. Same thing I used on the engine lock. All right, and uh, and sand. And when you see something that's not quite coming off, use your thumb. To scrape it off, okay. So it'll help you uh, get down to the metal. But you want this thing to look really, really good. It's part of my ADHD, and I really hate it. Okay, this is ticks me off sometimes. Before I put this on there, you know, put your finger around, make sure it's really good. Uh, these things do warp a little bit, are not perfectly flat. So uh, you're going to take some of this stuff. This is a liquid gasket. I love this stuff for the differentials. I don't even use a gasket. I use this. Uh, so uh, you, the thing is, I have talked bad about it. You don't put it on the engine side of the block. All right, have a rag ready. Uh, have a, it's convenient because you gotta wipe your, you're using your fingers here. You're going to wipe this along. A nice thin coat. It doesn't take much and it does go a long way. Go around. Go around all your bolts. Just really put a nice thin coat all the way around. 
Now it does take a, a little while for this to dry. It says one minute, but I like it a little bit longer. So uh, if you put it in before lunch, go have lunch while this is in there. Okay, so make sure 100% coverage is done. You don't want to see any metal. Alright, wipe your finger with the rag. The color, there's an orange stripe. There's only one way this will go on to the housing. Okay, color is toward the housing. Alright, it does dry pretty quick. Right, so now go ahead and put it in um, and I'll bring you on over. Okay, when you go put the uh, thermostat in, make sure no debris hits the back and make sure no, none of the uh, compound, uh, this, the uh, compound for the um, the uh, seal gets on that and uh, this is horizontal. Okay, the one that came out of the Jeep has a vent valve on it. There's no, they're no longer required, no longer made. And uh, the tilt manual says put that on top. Okay, the point, the point of the fact is this has to be horizontal. So you need to make sure that's in there. Uh, go ahead and put your housing on. All right, it, uh, watch out the fan. I do not want to touch, even touch that thing. So I want to get this uh, up where the screw goes. It's going to sit like that. All right, get your two two bolts in uh, to where they're catching threads. I'm using a little extension. It gives me room here to work on this one. You have to push the belt down to get to that one. All right, um, I'm going to bring it uh, um, bring it down to the metal. I'm going to use this one. I can do this from up on top. Okay, to 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 work on this one. So, uh, so the thing is, uh, once you get down to metal, you need to do a quarter turn, quarter turn, or half turn, half turn, up, down, up, down, up, down, until you get back down as, as nice and snug as you can. Then you take out your torque wrench and get it to 15 foot pounds. All right, I have them down as far as I want to. It worked very well with the bottom one with that small extension. I just went up here, went back and forth, and of course the top one, it was extremely easy to do. So uh, if, if you don't have a torque wrench, uh, see if you could borrow one from a friend or have him come over and help you out. Uh, it's just uh, really important to have the right torque on this. Um, I think the seal will work just fine, but it's always nice to have the torque on it. Now what you're going to see during your uh, tightening down, uh, right, on, right between the housing and the engine, you're going to see some of the liquid sealant uh, protruding out. You should see it all the way around and there it is. Okay that's probably the most common place where it's going to leak because uh, because of uh, the, the torque or not tightening it down enough. On this side you should see it all down there. All right so let, let it sit for a while. It says a, um, uh, a time limit on the uh, on the seal. Let's go take a look at that. Let's see it says no waiting for a cure. Torque can go black RTV for uh, use on oil pans, water pumps, transmissions, differential, and thermostats. Okay, when you take your wire harness to put it back on, okay, you slide it on and you'll hear a click. Alright, take a look around your engine of things you might have left before you know you go start your engine. Uh, you know, uh, housekeeping is a really important thing. I am not filling up the reservoir with coolant. This is a brand new radiator. It's a different video. Okay, so um, uh, that should be ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and put some coolant in and I'm going to start up and see if it resolves the issue I had. I'm getting ready to put Freon in. Okay, uh, one thing that I never really understand is why you have to get a new radiator cap when you put a new radiator on. Uh, as long as it uh, works, the pressure works and everything, when you push this in and it, it bounces back, uh, you should be okay. So uh, it's up to you if you want to get a new one. Now during filling, if you've done any other work like working on the uh, uh, thermostat or hoses or anything else, uh, your radiator hoses or any of that kind of stuff, you want to take a look at that for any static leaks. Okay, if you hear dripping uh, on the floor, onto your gravel, onto your pavement or anything like that, uh, take a look around while you're filling. Uh, you want to fill up above the grids in there, abo above the the, uh, the coils and everything, and that should be fine. Go ahead and cap it off. Alright, remember when this is warm, you never take it off when it's warm, okay? 
Anyway, I'm not going to fill this guy up to the fill line yet until I run the, the road test on this to make sure everything working good, the thermostat's working good that I put in there, the radiator is working good, not leaking. Okay, so uh, that's going to be the like the overall test of everything. Well, seems like the radiator is working good. Um, no leaks. No leaks on the bottom, which is really nice. I don't smell any antifreeze. It's really nice. It's been idling for a little while, still about a uh, hundred on. I'm going to look in. Uh, I can't. I probably can't see from this side, but uh, there's no leaks. That's really nice. On the, I'm looking. Uh, Looking right in, right in that area, right below the, the top hose. Okay, so uh, no leaks there. No leaks right below the, the switch and above the belt. No leaks in there, it's hard for you to see that. It's holding the, really well. No big bubbles on the bottom. No steam coming from the, <laughs> from the uh, valve cover. Let's see, uh, now I do have some idiot lights here that's uh, I, I need to work on a switch that's to my um, my airbags passenger side. Temperature's coming up nice and smooth. And I'll bring you back when uh, when the temperature actually hits about 210, 220. And that's where it should actually sit and stay. All right, now the thermostat on this Jeep opens at 195. So right now we're probably around 150. Oh, it's slowly creeping up there. If you notice my uh, my miles on this, 258,841. It is um, August, I think. I forget even what day it is. So it's uh, middle of August, uh, 2014. And uh, I'm the only owner of this vehicle. Bought it. It's a 2001 Jeep. I bought it in 2000. So it's high in mileage because uh, it's my business Jeep. All right. Um, it should have probably kicked in uh, the thermostat probably would be kicking in about now all right it's probably it's probably close to 195 so let's go take a look under the hood I don't want to see any smoke coming from that valve cover and that's a key thing if uh, things are heating up in there uh, we'll see smoke popping up like it like it did at the beginning of this video just don't want to see anything like that all right right at the 210. Big test is going to be on the road and uh, might actually test that out tomorrow while I go fishing, which I tried doing today. All right, hope you like the video. Uh, subscribe if you want. Bye. Here's an oh by the way. Hey, don't forget to fill up your reservoir to there with uh, coolant and water. Okay, mix. 50-50 mix.